Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books and today I am recording yet another video in my series where we are exploring the Dewey Decimal System in correlation with um, the non-fiction reading challenge that I'm hosting this year. Um, I will link it down in the description to that challenge along with the resources that I'm going to be using today including the um, Wikipedia page that talks about all of the Dewey uh, classes and explains what each of those sort of broad and then slightly more uh, specific <laughs> uh, categories are um, so that if you are following along at home and joining in with us in the channel uh, in the channel in the challenge um, then you will be able to find those resources you do not need to watch these videos in uh, order because they are definitely uh, you can read the books in any order that you like um, this is a section of the challenge that I have just completed um, at the time of filming so uh, because I have read a book for this prompt the 600s prompt um, so we are looking at the 600s today and the 600s is all about technology um, so let's get into it let's have a look at what you might find in the technology section the 600s in the Dewey Decimal System I'll link up in the cards and down in the description below to the uh, playlist of videos the other videos that I've already um, uploaded in this series uh, so that you can have a look at those um, at your leisure uh, if you wish so let's let's get into it without any further ado all right so I am looking at the Wikipedia page we're going to go through each section I'm going to show you some books from my collection uh, and also that I have picked up from the library but before we get into that let me tell you about the book that I have already read um, that meets the challenge uh, the prompt for the 600s so the book that I have read is called Unmasking Autism by Dr. Devon Price, The Power of Embracing Our Hidden Neurodiversity. I will link up in the cards to the video where I have reviewed this book um, in case you would like to hear more about it. Its call number is 616.8588. And the reason it's 616 uh, is because that section is called diseases. I mean, I would dispute that autism is, is a disease. Uh, it's more a neurotype, but this is the Dewey Decimal System that was created a long time ago. We may not be classing it as a disease these days, but that is where it lives in the Dewey Decimal System. So um, our uh, knowledge of science and uh, technology and, and medicine has moved on. The Dewey Decimal System remains the same. So um, Unmasking Autism, it was a great book. I gave it five stars. I will have a uh, popped it up into the cards and it will also be linked down below if you'd like to check that one out. All right, so let's get into looking at what else you might find in the 600s section. So let's start with 600. So this section is called technology. Um, so in 600, you've got applied sciences, technology. Uh, 601 is philosophy and theory of technology, you would imagine. Uh, 602 is miscellany, 603 dictionaries, encyclopedias, concordances, technical drawing, hazardous materials, technology, groups of people. We've got serial publications, organisations, education research related topics. Uh, eight, 608 is patents and 609 is history, geographic treatment and biography. I already have one book to show you. I have none in my own collection. So this is from a library that I visit and it is called Inventions That Didn't Change the World by Julie Halls. Uh, so this is uh, an amazing illustration to have on the cover of this book, I must say. Um, but there are also some fabulous ones on the back, some uh, other inventions that did not change the world. Uh, this book just looks at a bunch of different inventions that people have made and presumably patented or attempted to patent over the years that just sort of fizzled out and went nowhere. But I just love the concept that... Uh, of this book and that we've got people just out there inventing crap that nobody needs and I love that I love that about us as humans <laughs> uh, so that is that one for uh, the call number 609 
All right, let's move on to the 610s. This is all about medicine and health. Um, so 610 is medicine and health generally. 611, human anatomy, cytology, C-Y-T, cytology? No, cytology, cytology, histology. Uh, 612 is human physiology. 613 is personal health and safety. Then we move into forensic medicine, incidents of injuries, wounds, disease, public preventative medicine. Uh, 615 is pharmacology and therapeutics. We've got diseases, surgery. Uh, we've got gynecology. And uh, 619 is no longer used. Formerly experimental medicine. So we don't use that category anymore. Um, I have several books to show you from the 610s. Um, this is, and these are all from my own collection. I got like five books, which is pretty crazy. That's quite a lot of books for one section. Um, let's see what they are. <laughs> um, so this first one is Other Minds, The Octopus and the Evolution of Intelligent Life by Peter Godfrey Smith. So this call number for this one is 612.8. So 612 is about human physiology. That is not a human. This may be in the wrong place, but let me tell you about the book anyway. Um, so it says, In Other Minds, Peter Godfrey Smith, a distinguished philosopher of science and a skilled scuba diver, that is a cool combination. Tells a bold new story of how nature became aware of itself, a story that largely occurs in the ocean where animals first appeared. Tracking the mind's fitful development from unruly clumps of seaborne cells to the first evolved nervous systems in ancient relatives of jellyfish, he explores the incredible evolutionary journey of the cephalopods, which began as inconspicuous mollusks who would later abandon their shells to rise above the ocean floor, searching for prey and acquiring the greater intelligence needed to do so. A journey completely independent from the route that mammals and birds would later take. So um, this feels like this is in the wrong section because this is, doesn't seem like it's about human physiology. So I might have to have a look at that and I will get back to you and perhaps pop onto the screen where this should be. But it is an interesting sounding book. All right, let's move on. <laughs> One that is definitely about human physiology and is definitely in the right place is this one, Vagina, A Re-Education by Lynn Enright. Uh, so this one, the call number is 612.628. So this is definitely human physiology. Um, so basically, this is a book that is about, um, it's it's like a, a directory, uh, if you will, a, uh, what would you call it? A guide, a guide to owning a vagina. So if you have one, um, then you might be interested in looking up this book and finding out more about it. So this basically just goes through lots and lots of different things to do with vaginas and how they work, what they're, how they're composed, um, and then going through other women's health sort of things that are kind of to do with the vagina, including things like, um, you know, infertility for example uh so there's lots and lots of things that are definitely taboo subjects things that we don't talk enough about um so this is a book that uh i purchased to like a like a user's manual you know like a, an owner's manual for having one of these so if that sounds up your alley then please <laughs> no pun intended oh my god <laughs> Please, please seek this out if it sounds interesting to you. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, a book that's call number is 613, um, which is the section that's about personal health and safety. And the book that I've got is called The Art of Wellbeing, Joyous Living Inspired by Nature by Meredith Gaston. I remember where I picked this up. This I got this secondhand at, um, it was a big Lifeline book sale that was like in a, a community hall type of situation so it was like a huge huge sale lots and lots of boxes of books on tables every lots of people kind of looking through picking things out so I found this one um so this I think is kind of like a some various different things that are about kind of making yourself feel pretty good I think well-being uh I just saw a recipe in there um sort of it's about kind of oh that looks nice Sorry, I just saw a recipe that sounded really interesting. Miso glazed eggplant, pomegranate pine nuts, fresh mint, and creamy sesame sauce. Sounds pretty okay to me. Uh, I might have to flag that one. 
for later reference uh, for editing Kelly. Uh, it's on page 94. So looks pretty good. Okay, anyway, moving on. Um, so there's recipes in here. There is all sorts of, uh, you know, things that are about feeling good uh, within your body, self-care, that kind of thing. So that's where this um, this one comes into it. The next one that I've got is from 616. So this is about diseases, the same area where um, we had the book about autism. Um, this one is a book that has been doing the rounds for a while now. The Body Keeps the Score, Mind, Brain and Body in the Transformation of Trauma by Bessel van der Kolk. Um, so this one is all about trauma and the way that your body kind of remembers trauma and it kind of comes back and comes back and comes back. Um, it's a bit of a textbook. I've heard it's quite a heavy read, but for some reason I decided to buy it for myself. I don't think I knew that it was as many pages as it is, 541 pages. I don't think I knew that when I purchased it because I ordered it online and I have regrets. Um, but I have also heard really good things about this book. So um, if that's something you're interested in, you might want to seek this one out. Or if you've got a copy of this lying around, this could be your 600s prompt to get it read off your shelf. Um, so that's that one. Then still in 616, in the diseases section, we're talking about, first, We Make the Beast Beautiful, a new story about anxiety by Sarah Wilson. Again, I would say, is anxiety a disease per se? I don't know, but it's that's where it's classed. So uh, this is a book that's all about anxiety, as you can imagine, and um, sort of looking at, I, I guess, the way that we... Um, think about anxiety um, and so on. So yeah, this should be a good one. Um, I picked this one up secondhand as well. So um, yeah, I will eventually get to this one, I hope, because uh, it is something that I've sort of been seeing. It's also a really beautiful cover. Um, so the call number for this one is 616.8522. So if you've got a copy of this one hanging around as well, because again, this is another really popular book, um, I would, this could be your one to do for the prompt. So that one all right let's move on to 620 so this is engineering um and as part of this it's got all sorts of sub subcategories of engineering so things like mining and related operations applied physics military and nautical engineering civil engineering engineering of railroads roads uh hydraulic engineering sanitary engineering other branches of engineering so that's how they've organized this section i don't oh, cat I don't own any books uh, in this category. I'm not an engineer. I don't really have that much in interest in engineering. I mean, I guess I vaguely I'm interested in some as aspects of engineering, but not enough to buy a book. You know, I'll, I'll borrow one. Oh, hello. Can you get down, please? Cat. <laughs> what a pain in the butt. She's moved the camera as well. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so cats, um, difficult to film with. Uh, sorry if the camera has moved slightly. Hopefully it's not too different. So we're talking about engineering here, the 620. She's just here behind me, by the way. Um, so the book that I have picked up, I just picked one up from the library because I was like, you know, this is not a, an interest area for me. However, if I were going to pick one from the 620s, this could be it. It's called Rust, The Longest War by Jonathan Waldman. Um, and this is, as you can imagine, a book all about rust, which would be something that uh, engineers who work with metal would be... Uh, thinking about and considering a lot. So uh, it says, it has been called the great destroyer and the evil. The Pentagon refers to it as the per pervasive menace. It destroys cars, fells bridges, sinks ships, sparks house fires, and nearly brought down the Statue of Liberty. Rust cost America more than $400 billion per year. Costs, I should say, not cost. That's a current statistic. More than all other natural disasters combined. So it's basically, this is just kind of looking at rust, which might be of interest to you. So if so, you might seek this one out. So that's that. I'm gonna take a brief pause and I'll be right back. I'm just gonna pop all these books down on the ground because they're the stack on my knee is starting to get a little high. I'm back. 
Okay, let's have a chat about 6.30s now. So this is a section that is all about agriculture. So if you remember, our broad category is um, technology, but this particular section is looking at agriculture. Hello. Um, so this is, we've got 6.30 is agriculture and related technologies, uh, specific techniques, apparatus, equipment, materials, plant injuries, diseases, pests, 6.33 is field and plantation crops. 6.34 is orchards, fruits, forestry. We've got garden crops, horticulture. We've got animal husbandry. <coughs> we've got 6.37 is processing dairy and related products. And then we've got insect culture, insect culture. And uh, 6.39 is hunting, fishing, conservation and related technologies. So I only have one book to show you. This one is from my collection. I... I think it's a pretty vague reason for it to be here, but I think it's because it's about a cat. So <laughs> um, this is Dewey, the small town library cat who touched the world by Vicky Myron. Um, so this is about a cat that uh, is oh, dropped in the night drop box of the library um, where the author Vicky Myron worked. Um, and then so it's a little bit of a memoir about Vicky's life because it says he, she's a single mother who had survived the loss of her family farm and an alcoholic abusive husband. Her biggest challenge as the new head librarian in uh, at Spencer, Iowa, was to raise the spirits of a small out of the way town mired deep in the farm crisis of the 1980s. Um, so they called the cat Dewey and it became a library cat, which is really sweet. And people came to visit the library to visit Dewey so anyway cute book uh all about cats so that's why it belongs in the animal husbandry section because it's all about you know animals that we kind of have as pets and for you know various um you know animals we've cultivated to live alongside so cats are one of them um so that's that one let's move on to the 640s we've got Home, man home and family management is our broad category for 640. Um, we've got things like food and drink. We've got meals and tables. Tales, no, table service. I was right the first time. Oh, no. This guy. All right, you've got to get down now. You're being silly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Cats. Who'd, who'd record with them in the room? Fools. <laughs> okay. 642 is meals and table service. We've got... Uh, 643 is housing and household equipment. We've got household utilities, household furnishings, sewing, clothing management, and personal and family life. Management of public households, which is in, called institutional housekeeping. Uh, then we've got housekeeping. And then the last category, 649, is child rearing home care of people with disabilities and illness. Uh, so we've got uh, two books to show you, both from my collection. Um, the first one is from 641. So this is to do with food and drink. Um, also, this is where you would have all of your cookbooks. So you could read a cookbook for this. Just saying. It's a weird thing to read cover to cover, but you could. Um, but this one is a, about uh, a food and or drink, in this case a drink. It's 641.3372 and it's called Infused Adventures in Tea by Henrietta Lovell. Um, this is a book that I purchased relatively recently. It has beautiful cover with gold foil, which as you know, if you've been watching this channel for a while, is something we love here. So um, you've got to you've got to appreciate the gold foil when it comes into your life. Um, but this is uh, all about tea. Apparently, this lady is known as the Rare Tea Lady, and she is on a mission to revolutionise the way we drink tea by replacing industrially produced tea bags with an appreciation for the best quality leaves. Her quest sees her travel to the Shire Highlands of Malawi, across the foothills of the Himalayas, and to hidden gardens in the Wuyi Shan in China. I don't know if I said that right in China, uh, to source the world's most extraordinary tea. Infuse takes us on a remarkable journey, introducing us to the people who grow and craft the precious leaves, as well as the celebrated chefs who serve them. And always guiding us is La Lavelle herself, who tells the story of how her love affair with tea has shaped her life through times of both both great joy and adversity. The result is a delicious infusion of travel writing, memoir, recipes, and glorious photography, all written with Lavelle's unique charm and wit. So that is infused as a tea lover. This is why I've picked it up. Um, but yeah, I'm 
looking forward to at some point getting to this um, little beautiful memoir. What does it look like underneath? Let's have a quick look under the slip cover. Oh, okay, that's not what I was expecting. It's just white with gold foil on the spine. There you go. I would have thought they would have gone with green to match the um, the cover, but apparently not. That's okay. All right, the other book that I've got from the 640s is from the 648 to Housekeeping. Um, so it's 648.0941, and it's called A Woman's Work is Never Done, A History of Housework in the British Isles, 1650 to 1950 by Caroline Davidson. This is one I've had in my collection for a little while, um, but it is what it what it says on the tin. Like, this is, this is what it is about, A History of Housework. Um, so, yeah, it should be interesting. There's, there are pictures in here as well. Hello. Uh, so photographs of artworks we've got um all sorts of interesting things in here um some contraptions that could go along with that uh, first book that we looked at of uh, inventions that nobody uses anymore we shall see okay let's keep moving all right we're on to 650 now so this is management and public relations um now this is not an area that i have any books and when i went to the library to try and find one to show you it took a long time for me to find anything that even vaguely interested me but let's go through it anyway because this could be an area that interests you so um we've got things like office services uh processes of written communication shorthand Accounting, general management, advertising, and public relations. Not really an area of interest for me. So the one that I found at the library is called How to Start a Side Hustle by Kayleen Langford. And this is a little book all about, um, it's a fun guide, it says, to help you design a viable business model and bring your ideas to market. Packed with practical tips, hacks, and advice, this guide will take you through the process of starting your own business from the ground up in a straightforward and accessible way. So... If you want to start a side hustle, you might seek this book out and it would work for your 600 prompt. All right, let's move on to 660s now. So this is chemical engineering. Uh, so we've got things like uh, the technologies that relate to chemical engineering. We've got technology of industrial chemicals, technology of explosive fuels, related products, beverage technology, food technology in 664, uh, technology of industrial oils, fats, waxes, gases. 666 is ceramic and allied technologies. 667 is cleaning, colour, coating related technologies. 668 is technology of other other organic products. And then we've got metallurgy. Um, the book that I've got to show you is from 667. So this is cleaning, colour, coating related in, uh, technologies. And it is called Chromatopia. Chromatopia. An Illustrated History of Colour by David Coles with photography by Adrian Lander. Um, so I basically the title sounded interesting to me, but that cover is also really beautiful. Um, so this is all about the history of colour um, and it's looking at how we create pigments. It's looking at, you know, where different colours come from in terms of like us creating colour. Um yeah, so it's, it's just all about pigments. So that's the technology side of things. There are some really beautiful um, images in this um, in this book. Let me find a, ooh, a really good one to show you. Oh, there's a section called Mysterious Colours, so that's fun. So, for example, um, this section is about cadmium, so how we got the colour cadmium. The impact of cadmium colours on art cannot be underestimated, it says. And there's some really beautiful images to accompany um, the different pages. Let me just flick randomly. Red lead. So all those kinds of things. So that's chromatopia. Uh, if you're interested in colours and how the pigments came to be um, and where we get all of them from, uh, then this might be of interest to you. Okay, moving on to 670 now, um, we're talking about manufacturing. So this is um, all to do with uh, different types of manufacturing. So we've got a section for metal working processes and primary metal products. Then we've got iron, steel and other iron alloys, non-ferrous metals, lumber processing, wood products, cork. Uh, 675 is leather and fur processing. 
Uh, we've got a section for pulp and paper technology. We've got one for textiles, elastomers and elastomer products, and then an other section, other products of spe specific kinds of materials. The book that I've got to show you is just has the call number of 670. And it's called How Things Are Made from Automobiles to Zippers by Andrew Terranova and Sharon Rose. Um, so this is just generally about it, like how things are made. I've just seen Jet Engine, how a guitar is made. That's kind of cool. Um, so it kind of looks at, for example, um, the origins and then looking at stringed instruments of the past and how how uh, the guitar came to be it's got illustrations to show you um, exactly what's inside a guitar so that's kind of cool so here specifically they're talking about acoustic guitars of course um, but yeah pretty cool so if you're into like how things come to be the way they are and how they're put together this could be the book for you all right two more sections to go we're into 680 now so this is manufacture for specific uses that's our general topic here um so we've got things like uh precision instruments we've got uh, blacksmithing small forge work hardware and household appliances we've got furnishings and home workshops leather and fur goods and related products printing and related activities clothing and accessories other final products and packaging technology so all sorts of interesting things there Okay, this is an interesting book to be in this section, um, but the reason that it's there, so it's in 688, Other Final Products and Packaging Technology. Okay, so potentially it's because this is about Lego, but potentially it's also about uh, how the Lego was transported because the book is called Adrift, The Curious Tale of the Lego Lost at, at Sea by Tracy Williams. Um, so this is basically uh, so with Dr. Curtis Ebersmeyer and Mario Caccio, Cacciatolo. A cat has just jumped onto the table where I'm resting my camera. So if you're seeing like little seismic movement, it's not an earthquake. I'm okay. It's a cat on the table. Apologies for the disruption. If you could stay still, that would be very helpful. Okay. Um, so basically this is... In 1997, so on the 13th of February 1997, a huge storm near the coast of Cornwall pushed 62 containers of, off the cargo ship Tokyo Express. One was filled with nearly 5 million pieces of Lego, many of which were themed around the sea, interestingly. Beachcombers in the southwest of England soon began finding, pla uh, finding plastic octopuses, spear guns, scuba tanks, cutlasses, flippers, and even dragons on their shores, piece pieces that are still washing up today at the time of publishing, I assume. Potentially still now. This looks pretty new. Uh, 2022. So, yeah, this is very new. Okay, so... Um, Adrift is an insight into the mysterious world of oceans and tides, shining a light on this lost Lego and other cargo spills, as well as their lingering legacies in the sand and sea. It also captures the magic of beachcombing while cataloguing some of the weird and not so wonderful plastic items now found on so many shores. Um, it's a gorgeous cover, absolutely beautiful cover, um, about something that's quite sad, um, that we've got all of these little bits of plastic that are washing up and are in the ocean um, that should not be there. Um, but yeah, a fascinating topic, I'm sure. Um, so that is 680. All right, one more section to go, and this is 690. And this is all to do with construction of buildings. So uh, we've got things, a section for building materials, auxiliary construction practices, construction in specific types of materials and for specific purposes. We've got a section for wood construction, roof covering, utilities, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, engineering, and then detailed finishing. Um, so the book that I've got for you is from the call number 694 uh, called Making Things Right, A Master Carpenter at Work by Ole Thorstensen. I hope that's how you say that. Um, so obviously this is a wood wood construction, the wood construction section. So this is a car book about a carpenter. Um, I literally just picked this up from the library, not my own, this is not my own book, um, because this is not a super big area of interest for me. However, um, you might be interested and I picked this one because it has a cute cover. So there we go. All right, so that is the 600s. I hope that you've found some inspiration for your 
ch our challenge um, and that you have an idea of what you're going to read. If you've already read a book, um, I'd love to hear what you've read for the 600s um, and where it sort of fit in amongst all of those sections. Uh, if you haven't yet, I'd love to hear what you're thinking about reading. That would be amazing or what you've got in your 600s collection. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.